Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by DigitalOcean, the easiest cloud platform to deploy, manage, and scale applications. Over 150,000 businesses rely on DigitalOcean to remove infrastructure friction and deliver industry-leading price performance. Sign up today and receive a free $100 credit at do.co slash Android. And by LegalZoom, August is National Make-A-Will Month, so now it's your turn to take care of your family and assets with an estate plan. For special savings, visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout. Hello, welcome to All About Android, episode number 383, recorded on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018. For your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful, I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Lyon. What? Wait a minute, we're all on we're at all the same time? It's today. been literally, it's been three weeks. I know. I know. Uh, welcome back. Finally. Thank you. I'm so tired. And welcome tired. back a second week in a row. I need to rest. On. Yeah. I need a rest. I hear you. Uh, joining us, it's been a while, Joshua Vergara. Yeah. Hello, Josh. How's it going, hey. Joshua? What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for having me back on. This is a first. I normally am, I normally make the effort to make it into the studio, but yeah. that's not the case today. <laughs> yeah, you really Josh, missed out. what's Last going on with you? Me. Sorry, I totally interrupted you. No, 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 go, go. I was going to ask what's going on <laughs> with you because, because a lot has changed for you, and so that's why I wanted yeah. to get into that conversation and kind of figure out where you're at. Indeed, in a more in a more immediate sense, let me just set the record straight. This was supposed to look a lot better, so I, I apologize <laughs> okay. for my video. Okay, you're back. Uh, we were, uh, just a little bit of technical difficulty before the show. In any case, um, yeah, I actually uh, went ahead and, as you can see in the lower third there, I went uh, to be a solo creator. Now, um, I used to be with Android Authority, but that exit actually happened back in June, which was a huge transition, especially considering my birthday was in the middle of that month. So a lot has happened since then. I'm working on YouTube videos on my own channel. You can always find me on social media and i'm actually also the host of yet another tech podcast you may be familiar with it the pocket now weekly so there are a lot of things that i'm trying to kind of put my stamp on uh, all over the tech space and i'm just happy to work with anybody who will have me that's awesome. You guys. that's awesome uh i was uh watching on youtube actually earlier today a little bit of the pocket now weekly show and i noticed that you guys even put the pizza guy to work on this last show oh, yeah that was so much fun. He came in and saw that there were lights set up, and he was uh, naturally he was very curious. And he looks over and he sees Jaime Jaime Rivera and myself sitting on the couch recording this podcast. And he goes, "Hey, aren't you guys on YouTube?" And we were like, "Yeah, man, come on over." Nice. As it turns out, he knew his stuff. He totally and, uh, did. He, yeah, he had opinions on the Note 9 already, and he wanted Dang. to see if we were able to show him the phone. And he was like, oh, my God, you have the phone. This is amazing. And he was on the show for like a good 30 minutes just yeah. talking about his thoughts on it. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Wow. I love it. Wow, you are right, though. Your normal camera looks great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to blame I'm going to blame Skype in this case because clearly it works on Hangouts and Hangouts on Air which is what we use for that show. Um yeah. so I'm going to blame Skype today. <laughs> That's what we do. Anytime there's anything going wrong even if it has absolutely nothing to do with video streaming whatsoever, blame Skype. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I don't feel bad about that. You know, this that. is really funny, should. though. I have to give you guys even more props because I've been in the studio. I've seen the production that goes into the show. And I'm literally watching this episode via Skype <laughs> in the way that it's produced. This is really surreal to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> because when you're talking, suddenly there you are, and then it switches to the lion cut. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting experience for the, for the guests on the other side. Meanwhile, that's how the majority of people that come on the show actually experience it. You're one of, if not almost the only person, you know, a few few other people mm -hmm. that actually makes a trek that, that's like, hey, I'm going I'm to be on, so yeah. I'm going to go ahead and fly out there. Is that okay? <laughs> Heck yeah, it's okay. It's always it's a okay. commitment. Yeah, no it's kidding. commitment. Yeah. So, anyway, we're happy to have you on, whether you're in studio or not. Uh, it's great to have you here. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to discuss Huawei's camera photo trickery, which is a story that a lot of people are talking about right now, and it might sound familiar. Uh, vlogging with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, as Joshua has proven, uh, is a pretty you know easy to do thing. Uh, Pixel Smart Display, possibly. Gmail's confidential mode is now a thing. Uh, Google Coach, we'll tell you all about that. Your emails and a whole lot more. Um, 
Let's see. You know, Victor, I, t I told you before the show that I was going to look for some uh, something pretty important. And I don't know if this qualifies, but I think we have some breaking news. When I say I want, you say pie. I want pie. I want pie. Oh my pie. gosh. We got Teen Titans in there? I don't like, know. Our demographic I feel like there's is... some copyright implications there. <laughs> yeah. It was less than 10 seconds. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. I was like, let's see, if I could do this short enough, it could qualify as fair use, you right? You really are going after the millennials for the show. Look, they're... Okay, so on one hand, there's a, on one hand, it. there's a lot of pie songs, but on the other hand, there's not a lot of pie songs that work with like the breaking news. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun. yeah. And uh, gosh, who sent that in? I I should have uh, noted noted the name of this person. Somebody emailed it. I'll look for it. Uh, anyways, it was I. It, it was like the song is made for this segment. Um. So, anyways, we're probably going to get you couldn't, down. You couldn't use Sherry Pie by Warren. No, well, I feel like that one would be identified just, just as equally. And I know, yeah, you're right. And the video <laughs> just, it just didn't feel right. The video just didn't feel right for this show. But. And if you if you uh, watch enough, if you watch enough of the team for breaking news, also, sorry. what's that? <laughs> if you watch enough of the team, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> if, if you watch enough of the Teen Titans Go show, yeah. Sometimes you really think it is written for us. Oh, okay. The, well, the so, the, so they wanted us. they wanted so, us to do this. Then, yeah, is what you're saying. I'm, I'm saying our age group, but yeah. okay. Teen oh, Titans is the Animaniacs of 2018. <laughs> yes, I'm 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 slightly scared. I will be honest, but uh, yeah. Hey, we'll see. If if I have to take you know not use that thing, it's fine. I can figure something. I mean, else listen. Out. I've gotten this far of infringing copyright by singing other people's songs. Yeah, but it's not actually the other person's song that's playing through your mouth, you know. It's not. No, it really is not. As much but as I try. It's short enough. That's what I'm that's what I'm hanging my coat on right now. It's short enough. I think it'll qualify as fair use. But sure, we'll, that'll we'll, work. We'll certainly sure. see. Uh, but uh it, it's not breaking news at all. I just wanted a reason to to play it. It's time. Um, it's that time of year where you, we have to yeah, we you have knew. to justify. Uh, yeah. If you go to datastudio.google.com, you can find Android Projections, which is a neat little graph that reminds me of a graph that a viewer, who was that? Uh, Tyler Hilliard sent us a couple of years ago that we've been referring to to kind of track Android version numbers and where they sit in comparison with other versions as far as like how quickly they proliferate and everything. Well, Google's doing this. I don't know how long they've been doing this, but... They're tracking it as well, obviously, and uh, just thought I'd kind of point that out. It's an interesting way to visualize Android, and it really reminded me of the work that Tyler did. I love this set of data stuff. This data yeah. visualization stuff is so cool. Yeah. And look at that pie chart. Uh, ah. But look ah. at that pie graph, though. That's crazy. The pie chart. Um, yeah, but, 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 but pie's... Right? Yeah. Pie's, pie's skyrocketing. Yeah. So here, you know, this is basically saying at this at this stage, would it be this stage? Because I feel like it just launched. Like, I, I guess I'm still trying to figure right, out. Right, no, like, I mean, it's... It's it's far and away above... It's Well, this is 40.7%, but what the heck does that mean? But it's not on 47, 40.7% 40 of devices. Is that projected? Is that is it projected based off the... It just came out a week, so it, that's got to be projected. Maybe at the rate that it's going, I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever this pie, About graph. <laughs> whatever this graph means that I can't read, it makes pie look really good. Uh, so well, let's hope that some, Google knows what it's doing. You just need some whipped cream for that. <laughs> yeah, just top it with a little whipped cream, maybe a cherry on top. Yeah, so a not cherry a pie. Update. All right. Anyways, maybe maybe some uh, folks can uh, head over to datastudio.google.com. Let us know what we're looking at. <laughs> Send us an email and set us straight. Uh, I would appreciate it. All right. Without uh, any further blabbering about things that we can't quite understand, let's get to the news. When I say news, mm -hmm. I say booyah. Oh, that's a Teen Titans Go reference for y'all. <laughs> Here's Android news. Dang. So Victor knows all about. So are you like a huge fan? Teen no. Titans fan? No. No, but you knew enough. You yeah. recognized it. Yeah. What about pop culture. What about you, Joshua? 
Teen Titans. Oh, I'm ju- sorry. I'm Teen Titans. I have not seen Teen Titans, Teen Titans Go yet. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm getting ready for our next uh, our first news story by holding the camera in oh. a certain way right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, so you're obviously taking a selfie with a Huawei uh, device right now, right? Totally. Do you see this quality? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do see this quality, and it's rather unimpressive. Jeez. Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> camera sample faking. I feel like we this story kind of bubbles up every year or two, right? Like this is something that is not very new, uh, the world of smartphone advertising. Yet every single time it happens, people freak out about it because it feels very deceptive. In this case, Huawei Mobile Egypt posted an image, uh, which they were saying, you know, is a selfie that's taken with its phone, the Nova 3 in that market. Only an actress who was on the shoot posted on Instagram a photo that was kind of like behind the scenes. I think it was a number of photos from this photo session behind the scenes. And in it, it shows a like you see you see the final image, which is the guy holding his can his hand outside of the camera, you know, taking a picture. And then you see her Instagram photo and it's taken at the same moment. It's got the person propped up with the DSLR and the guy who's holding his hand out has no phone in it. He's literally just holding it outside of the image of the uh, the camera. And what you end up with in the in the promo video uh, promo spot is a photo that looks really amazing because you know, no duh, it was taken with Isn't the DSLR. Isn't this how it's done on every phone? I don't know. I mean, that was kind of my main question here. This bubbles up time and time again, and I know why it feels wrong when you, when you see this. this. It feels stock, like deceptive the advertising. The images that come on the phone that are already preloaded, they do not look like the same pictures that I take with the phone. No. It's, it's never the same. I, like, you mean I don't like the know, desktop images? Well, they, they always like include some sample images of some like stock photo people laughing, like throwing back their head and laughing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, this is the this is how the galaxy takes, you know, photos. But it's like, it's that's not. You took this with a completely different device. Yeah, right. Well, and so uh, Samsung apparently also just this week, uh, Samsung Marketing published images uh, that they said were taken with the Galaxy A8 I'm on sure. social media. Mm-hmm. Turns out these were actually matched to actual stock footage libraries online. Right. Then Samsung, you know, in return said, well, many of the photos we post are taken using the smartphones, but some like that are images that also express the attitude of our target that's audience, PR. That's PR <laughs> which, oh my goodness, finest. shoot me now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pure droids. So come on. It's total marketing speak. But, uh, and then you remember back in 2012, this was a pretty famous one I where do. Nokia had uh, a promo video that was showing their floating lens image stabilization and how you know the the technology on this on this phone could stabilize the image so this girl was like riding down the street and it was like before everything was all shaky and then after with this phone supposedly everything was still except that while she was riding in the background you saw a car pass along the way and of course they did a freeze frame of the car passing and in the reflection of the window you see the whole rig hanging out of the van that's following the girl and it's this gigantic camera rig that's taking the shot so apparently this is just a thing that happens but should we be upset about it joshua what do you think (laughs) Uh, I'm more upset about the stock footage uh, the being used rather than, you know, kind of faking the photo. Because let's put it this way. As a consumer, I also understand, as someone who reviews these phones, I also understand that the front-facing camera never looks that good. No. <laughs> like, I'm not going to suspend my disbelief in a promo like this. Uh, and actually, as a creator, it's kind of nice seeing how they achieve that shot. Obviously, it's it's a little bit deceiving. But what I would tell these companies is why not use as many tools as possible to get the best possible photo photo with the phone like yeah. the rig I'm okay with the stabilization rig as long as the phone is what's in the rig I'm okay with these photos coming out the way that they do as long as uh, it's clear to us as consumers that they use the best possible lights they use the best possible conditions maybe they put they filter it you know to heck you know I'm okay with all of that but to use something like stock footage that's the that's the only one that actually kind of pisses me off as a uh, as a photographer personally <laughs> well I mean even the DSLR example that's not using the actual phone so not oh, only true. is you know stock Stock footage came from you know some random place DSLR like it's still in a controlled environment yes they did it but it still has nothing to do with the phone I I completely agree with you I feel like you know just do your very best to you know to be able to make the claim that these photos actually were taken with a camera there's a million and one things that you can do with a smartphone camera to improve the scenario Apple's famous for doing this right mm-hmm. their their ad campaign on shot while on an iPhone and 
I like to assume that Apple's telling the truth when they make that bold claim. Maybe they aren't, but as far as I can tell, they are. But it just so it turns out it's not just that someone held up the phone and just went poof and you, got an amazing still, picture. There are ways yeah, to make it better. You can still shoot something on an iPhone and then pass it through Final Cut Pro. Right, or, or you could do post-processing. Yes, That's exactly. another aspect. You, I mean, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. Sure. Um, but, you know, we got to if give, anything, that's education. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and that's you showing wanna, the, the potential. Yeah, right. and, and Apple is actually very good at marketing stuff like that. Like, this is the actual potential of the products that you buy from us. Right. Um, whereas this is just like plain out marketing lying, and it's it's awful, especially because we have to give consumers, like consumers know that cameras don't shoot like that. They've been using smartphones long enough now. We've had smartphones in our pockets for maybe about 10 years now. Like, people know if something is not true to form, and that's just... We're not dumb. Yeah, but but We're Ron, but but Ron, uh, front-facing cameras now are coming in like twenty and twenty-four megapixel. Doesn't mean they're good. They are. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're doesn't good. Doesn't mean they're good. Right. What do you think, Ron? I mean, I don't know. It's tough because like they're trying to sell phones, right? So like it's it, the, you you got to look at what the motivation is, and you want to make it look the most appetizing thing that there is. I yeah. can't tell you how many recipes I've seen photos of, and then I cook it. It doesn't look like that. Or McDonald's right? just, oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, or like you know, food photography and all this sort of things. Like so, it's it's tough when you're trying to promote a device that allows you to create the medium or the media that you are using to promote it, right? Yeah. So like, like you're selling the camera capabilities. And so it's it's a, it's expected that you're using uh, the camera that contained with the phone. But in, with marketing rules, you just want the sexiest looking shot you can get. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I agree. I think it's it's a classic way to get a, a marketing blunder, a one plus in marketing, marketing blunder. Um. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, not, I'm completely not surprised. Not surprised no, at all. No, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm just a little d disheartened. Well, what yeah. do you mean? That's, it's the world that's we how, live that's in. That's how you sell stuff to people. Yeah. yeah whoever, whoever posted the photo is not working with Huawei ever again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, that's yeah, for sure. Right. But then the they'll Instagram just hire photo, someone else right. who's better at it. Here's a stock photo nobody will ever see. Well, I'm surprised. I'm actually very surprised that there is no like, there's nothing in the contract, or maybe there is something in the contract that says, you know, like when you're on a set, if you've been contracted to do this work, there will be no, you know, in production photos yeah. of any kind, no share, sharing. Yeah, of I bet you media. don't. I bet you're not allowed to even talk at like Apple shoots when they're doing their ads. Right. Like you just no talking. Yeah. You're lucky to breathe. <laughs> lucky to press any buttons because there aren't any there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are no buttons to press. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go for the Apple no button joke. Uh, Flo, you're up next. That was a joke. Yeah, okay. it's a pretty bad one. All right. Uh, okay, so I wasn't here last week, but <laughs> apparently Ron mentioned a story that showed how Google tracks location even when users turn off their location tracking. And I did see some of that pop up in my Google feed, so I know that 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 has been a conversation of topic lately. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we have heard from a San Diego man who is suing Google in a class action complaint. Uh, he says Google violates California's Invasion of Privacy Act um, and the con our constitutional right to privacy. Uh, I, I guess in America. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, classes in include um, Android class and iPhone class um, could take months to determine if there is a sufficient class for the suit. Activists are also writing to the FC FTC against Google. They say this violates Google's 2011 FTC settlement, which included that Google would not misrepresent details related to information collection and disclosure to <sighs> users. So apparently that did not happen. It was not disclosed that turning off the location would still have you be tracked. So, I mean, I guess he has a point here to be a little upset. A little upset, a little miffed. Um, yeah, I mean, I would be a little upset, a little miffed too. Obviously, as Android users, we've come to this bridge many times and have said, you know, we accept all of these things in, you know, in, in exchange for all of these services that you give us and all of this like down to the T accuracy. But, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you can have my data. Be a little clearer about it. I mean, I guess it'll. It remains to be seen um, what kind of case he has. But I mean, just looking at looking at the stuff that we talked about last last week, as far as you know, how clear or rather how unclear it is when you hit that location button, what's actually happening behind the scenes, and that there are actually other parts of your phone that are tracking even when that's deactivated. And the majority of customers probably don't even realize that when they 
switch that off, they think they're in the clear. Turns out they're not. It really seems to go against what uh, you know what he's alleging here, what the FTC is alleging. So this could be a this could be a pretty important case for how not just Google, but how smartphone oh, you know yes. companies manage this kind of data uh, on but, device and give people controls he, around that. And and it could be, but it's a class action suit, right? Yeah, and that's class true. Action suits tend to, I mean, some give I me mean, money. Hey, yeah, I, I I love the four dollars I got from that Uber settlement. A few oh, years what did ago. you do with that? I don't know what the <laughs> class action was. You got but an I Uber. Used, yeah, yeah, I, I got an Uber between the years of twenty twelve and twenty fifteen, and so I got four dollars and eighty six cents, right? Um, but also, class action suits then get the Ticketmaster results, where oh. you, you right, like yeah. so. I, I I I agree that this could blow the doors off the whole location tracking and all this sort of stuff. It potentially could, but class action suits tend to be money grabs, yeah. and they tend to be you know not precedent setting or policy setting decisions. More of a you know kind of a you did us wrong, pay us back kind of thing. So I'm a little dubious about this. So like the know. mob instead of Actually there's no well, Flo, there's, Flo, there's no such thing as the mob. Come on. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. <laughs> you say so. All right. Uh, uh, Joshua, what did what did you make of all the all, of all this location tracking nonsense? You know, I I, I understand that uh, a level of transparency is uh, desired out of all of these companies, and if they go back on their word, then they have to be held responsible. But I also wish that I could see if and when or if, if if this information has actually ever been used for nefarious purposes. I, I wish I could see the final results of that because that would actually corroborate this, what they would call evil, because Google's supposed to be do no evil, or they were at least. Um, but I don't know. It, it just makes me think of that one time when I was at a Google I.O. and somebody just crashed the show and was a protester and said that Google was trying to like control the world or something like that. And they were escorted out uh, somewhat aggressively from the Moscone Center. And um, the person who was on stage who was interrupted said, well, this is like the most harmless app I could ever think to make. And everyone like clapped. And I was like, do we really know though? Do we, do we truly know? And I agree that we have to know. What what was the app at that moment? Was I don't it remember. Apps? It was it yeah, was some sort of data that. tracking app. It was something. That, it was very deep development. It was very low level. Yeah, right. But I, I can't remember exactly what it was. Right. Yeah. No, I remember that. I was at that IO as well. That was uh, that wasn't the same year that that there was the airplane diving and all that. That right. No, that was twenty twelve. I don't think so. No. Yeah. That was twenty twelve. That, that was crazy. Um, <laughs> things have gotten less I, chaotic. At, at things have gotten a little. Well, because you know now. with. With Facebook, it's clear what data they, they, they stored that ended up being used for a terrible purpose. I even got the the uh, warning on Facebook that my data was used for Cambridge Analytica. So, you know, uh, I'll take I'll take responsibility for our president right now. But <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't um, say that I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but but it was weird because once I saw that my data was actually used for that purpose, that's when it became very real to me. And um, in this case, it's a matter of you said this and you went against your word so class action lawsuit which i understand but right. if this data could actually be used for those purposes has it been is one of my, my next question would yeah be. right and uh yeah that's that's an answer that we probably will never know honestly <laughs> I mean, we have okay so here's the thing about secrecy. that if you're using a google product you have to be okay with whatever is being done whether it's nefarious or not because google is going to do other things that you're not going to agree with because google's not just google it's also alphabet so you have to just decide, is the risk worth it for you or not? If it's not, put it down and go get another phone from Apple. Yep. That's yeah. it. And then Apple will use that in its next keynote and say, look, guys, we are so much safer than Google, even though we also do bad things. I was going to say, until it's revealed what the, they're doing yeah, the same I mean, thing or something very similar. It's a different level of bad like, on every side. Yeah. yeah. So in this case, I'm going to be like, you know what, Google, I gave you all my location data and I'm getting a lot of perks from it. I have great restaurant. Uh, every time I go somewhere, I know where to go <laughs> eat. I can get around the Bay Area, no problem. You always reroute me around when I, there's traffic. And you so take care I've, of me when I'm stuck in traffic. Yes. I Thank mean, you, you do Google. a lot of things I don't agree with, yeah. but, you know. Yep. <laughs> Less traffic. And I, I, we live and in a car culture in California, it. you know? We just gotta, but less traffic makes it just, all better. You know, you just got to weigh the things out. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> yep. All right, Ron, you got email. You did get an email. You Tom got mail. wrote in. 
Tom wrote in from the All About Android Nation and says, I've got a Samsung Galaxy S7, which is getting a bit sluggish despite occasionally rebooting or using the device maintenance function and settings. I anxiously, I anxiously await the Pixel 3 release to see how it turns out to replace this phone. But in the interim, I've heard that doing a factory reset can be helpful in restoring some speed to the phone. Is there any easy way to go about this and, um, and restoring the phone to as close as current of configuration as possible? My phone is encrypted thanks to the work policy, which requires it to access work email on my phone. I'm also using the Nova launcher because I understand uh, that can help reconfigure the app layouts from the saved file. Otherwise, what advice do you have for those uh, those of us clinging to an older, aging, sluggish device? So, what? Uh, how can you do a factory reset and then restore your phone back to how it was before the factory reset? I feel like that's this, the question. Yeah, I feel like this has gotten a lot easier in the last couple of years. Yes, things happen automatically with Google, you know, in the Google Cloud, and even Samsung offers this. If you go into settings uh, and you find what is it? Backup my data. There's like, like on the Samsung phones, there is a backup my data area, and you can choose whether you're backing up to Samsung Cloud or Google Cloud. And that kind of stores, it doesn't store every absolute thing into the cloud. So you'll have to take a look and it'll tell you kind of what it's putting up there. But it sets aside a lot of the important stuff. And then when you then do an actual factory reset, you can go back in there and pull it back down. But I mean, I, ha I get this with my regular Android, you know, my Pixel phone or any phone that I'm setting up where through the setup process, it says, how do you want to restore your phone or do you want to start fresh? And when I say I want to re you know, restore from a backup, it just already has a bunch of these backups already saved in the cloud and it makes it really easy for me to just tap it and it starts downloading the apps and sometimes it even signs me in on those apps. The, 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 Google, the Google services restore function is like a, a thing of magic to watch it evolve from where it was years ago mm -hmm. to now that you can, you, you know, uh, boot up a phone or factory reset a phone and restore from a recent backup. And to your point, have stuff already installed and already be logged in. It's just amazing. Like remembering the Wi-Fi setup. It's like it's it, the stuff that used to be a headache is so much easier now. But that said, I don't think I've done a restore that's been a complete 100 percent match. No. Yeah, I no. agree. Yeah. Yeah, no. I don't think yeah. so. Joshua, what do you think? I would say back up the data. Obviously, you want your pictures and your photos. But other than that, I would I would actually uh, recommend if, if if at all you're willing to go through the slog of it to actually go straight fresh and download using yeah. Wi-Fi, of course, all of the apps that you use. Because yeah. I do that with every phone. And um, not to say that I've had to do. I mean, we're privileged as reviewers that we can move to different phones pretty frequently. But whenever I set up a new phone, I do it as a new device. So I'm more mindful of the apps that I actually use. And a lot of the times there are apps that kind of make the chopping block every time I go to a new mm -hmm. device because I don't need it anymore. Yep. Yeah, I completely agree. I usually try. I mean, it's nice. In a pinch, I will say, okay, sure, install them all. My preference, though, if I have the time to to do it. And again, reviewers, kind of a different category because we're setting up so many different devices, you know, might be different in your scenario. Oh, I would but say this is exactly why we need to only have like six apps. <laughs> Yeah, because then it's a little way It'd be easier. A lot easier. <laughs> feel way easier. Phones. But it's so true. Anytime I do the, yeah, sure, I'll just take the backup from I don't know the the Note, yeah. you know, eight the last time sure. I installed it. Then it's installing these like games that I haven't played in forever that I forgot that I installed way back then, and you know, it requires five hundred and some odd megs of download, and just like <laughs> ah, yeah, it's a lot of stuff that you might not even need. No, so you it's don't nice need to start it. fresh. It is nice to start fresh. Yes. Those one phone only messaging apps are the biggest pain, in my opinion. I, I, I absolutely abhor those. I wish those weren't really a thing. I understand why. But it's really hard to get back to where I was before when I have to install the app from fresh and, and, and sign in and it's a single sign in. And it's, yep. yeah, I think WhatsApp does that. Does Is it WhatsApp? I know WhatsApp, Allo, Allo does that. Yeah. Um, WeChat. You know, so I, I hate that. That's the only yeah. thing I would say is the the, the painful part of my restore process. But at least those now, and at least I know for Allo, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's this way, they have some sort of a restore of, oh, yeah. of your oh, yeah. messages. And I think they used to not, you know, it was like, okay, cool. This is now your new phone, but we don't bring over your old message data. Now that kind of mm -hmm. brings over. So at least there's that you get to the restore that. And we know that Ron to Ron, it is very important to, uh, to save and archive all of his text messages uh, that he's it ever is. had in his history. Uh, yeah, I have a long thread of me and my best friend since like 2014. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. There's some back important in time, stuff like, oh, in wow, there. We talked about some really cool stuff back then. Well, you know. <laughs> it's good to have it. You yeah. never know. Listen, we live sentiments. in a digital time. I don't have a paper trail. I don't have a yeah. box of journals right. I can open and yeah. friendship books. Like, Beans. this is how we... 
I can't tell you how many books I've read of write like Jack Kerouac's letters, you know, and things yeah. like yeah. that. They're gonna have books of our text messages. And they're very, <laughs> very sad. All right, that's very uh, sad. Let's take a moment and thank our first sponsor of the evening. And this episode of All About Android is brought to you by Digital Ocean. I'm so excited for this. Digital Ocean provides the easiest cloud platform to deploy, manage, and scale applications with droplets, virtual machines that are scalable, that are a scalable compute platform with add-on storage, security, and monitoring capabilities. And I'm excited because I'm actually a Digital Ocean customer. Uh, I've, I'm working on a very exciting project that is hosted on DigitalOcean, and when we needed a scalable uh, hosting uh, virtual machine-based platform, we looked at DigitalOcean, and that was the clear option because they give you choices. You can choose from a standard or CPU-optimized droplets and customize from there. DigitalOcean is designed for developers. That's one of the reasons why we went in that direction. Uh, the easy-to-use control panel and API lets developers spend more time coding and less time managing their infrastructure. They've got industry-leading price to performance and access to compute resources that you need at the lowest rates, saving up to 55% compared to other cloud providers. And you'll always know what you'll pay per month with the flat pricing structure across all data center regions. Another reason why we chose DigitalOcean. They're fantastic. Um, so included at that flat pricing structure at no additional cost, 99.99% uptime uh, SLA, which is uh, if you're into hosting and technology stuff, you know how important it is to be up. And 99.99% is fantastic. They offer cloud firewalls, monitoring and alerting, full DNS management, global data centers, enterprise SSDs, and easy to use API. And these are all reasons why over 150,000 businesses, including some of the world's fastest growing startups, rely on DigitalOcean to remove infrastructure friction and deliver industry leading price performance. So if you're if you're looking for hosting, if you're looking for a great option, if you're working on that next next great startup, you want to take a look at DigitalOcean. You want to sign up today, and you can receive a free hundred dollar credit at do.co/android. That's do.co/android for a free hundred dollar credit. And we thank DigitalOcean for their support and making such a great product that I will continue to enjoy using. Thank you, DigitalOcean. Thank you, DigitalOcean. Great to have you guys on board. And now it's time to talk a little bit about some hardware, the wear that is hard. And sometimes very fingerprinty, as is the case with the Moto Z3. Um, Indeed. I, I'm playing around with the Moto Z3. I'm going to have a full review of this on this weekend's new screensaver, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to kind of save my impressions, though, and toss it over to you, Joshua, because you've also been playing around with the Moto uh, Z3, and you're working on it as well. You're, the back of yours yeah. looks different from mine. Uh, is, a little bit. I do use pop nub? sockets. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> I do have my pop socket on here. Um, what's funny is that you could just see, you're right, very fingerprinty. Yeah. This thing just gets so smudged up so easily. And then when I take off this pop socket, there's going to be this very clean circle right on the middle. <laughs> I was going to ask, so you put a pop socket on Z3. Now, because it's a mod phone, does it feel weird to do that kind of thing? Because I never think to, like, I don't want to put anything on the back because it's supposed to have, you know, an accessory. Actually, you know, this is this is actually showing my cards a little bit because I'm reviewing this without any of the mods. So yeah. I don't have any mods. I'm looking at this phone just as a standalone because obviously that 5G mod is supposed to be coming sometime in the maybe not so near future. We're not too sure yet, obviously. Yeah, but the uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And uh, the thing is that there's really... Again, as I mentioned earlier, we are quite privileged as reviewers that we're able to have so many different devices. I just, on a personal level, I'm reviewing this actually as uh, as Pocket Now. Um, it's just part of my work with Pocket Now, and. I have to say, it's kind of the worst time for me to be using this when I'm doing the review of the Note 9 at the same time, and. Mm. I have to say the Moto Z3, it's a, it, it, it is a fine device. Uh, there's there's really nothing wrong with it. It is far from exceptional, I'll say that much. But at the same time, it is a reliable device that you can get on Verizon for under $500, which is, to me, something that I, I couldn't help but think that I, I wish previous Moto Z devices had this model in mind, that you pay something like $500 for the phone outright, and then that cost is made up because of a mod. I, I kind of wish that that was the way it was uh, in the past. I wish it would, it's the way it is moving forward. But from what I can gather, the Moto Mods, this generation of Moto Mods is going to end with this phone. You mean versus and, people, that, they were paying, I think, monthly for it, right? And it was like still $700? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would still be a yeah. lot of money. And is, yeah. uh, 
If you're paying seven hundred dollars for just this phone right now, I mean, you're already you're already cutting yourself off at the knees by having a Snapdragon eight thirty five. Uh, it doesn't do a bad job. I'm not saying that it's a bad performing phone uh, in in any case. Moto does put in its own features on the software that are really useful. Uh, even the gestures, and you're going through them right now, Jason. The uh, Moto display is still one of the mm -hmm. best always not really always on displays, but it's one of the best display add ons you could ask for. Um, kind of harkens back to when Moto did it with the Moto X back in the day, and I even have my old. Moto X, I was just looking at that with this, and I just remember that, honestly, I guess my, my number one gripe with the Z3 is that it just doesn't excite me the way that Moto used to. That's really mm -hmm. my number one problem with it. Um, and I also see, Jason, you're using the the thing I hate the most about any it's the uh, about any Android device. It's the one gesture button. <laughs> See, and you know what? Like, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I think Motorola does the gesture better than uh, Pi does. Show it. Uh, well, so, you know, uh, eh? if, if you go to the right, it basically pulls eh? up your multitasking, which I like the way mm. Pi does that better. But what Moto mm -hmm. does is it actually has this act as the back button. So if you happen mm. to be in an app and you want to go back. It feels odd. Yeah. It feels odd. I really don't like it. I used to use it a lot on uh, phones like the Huawei phones and the Oppo phones mm -hmm. because they have that option as well. And I just never liked it. I, I just don't like it at all. And uh, truth be told, uh, after after my exit from Android Authority, I went straight to an iPhone 10 for a few weeks. And oh my God, I can't stand full screen gestures. I just can't. <laughs> I don't like them at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this is this is nowhere near a middle ground, in my opinion. The Android Pie version that I've been trying to use on my Pixel 2, uh, I actually like that a little bit better. But uh, all all you need to know about the the pie gesture. Uh, sorry, going on a little bit of a tangent, but all you need to know about the pie gestures is that when you're in an application, a little back button appears. So they're 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 not gonna just leave you off in the deep yeah. waters uh, trying to figure out what the gesture will be. Yeah, <laughs> um, I kind of. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I wanted to say I feel like this phone is going to be the budget Verizon pick, or not the budget, but the Verizon pick that they push you towards when you come in for like a new phone or you want to like get your family upgraded. They're going to be like, get these and we'll toss in a bunch of accessories and you can just get them out right for. I'm sure they will, especially as they get closer to any sort of 5G rollout. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and this is a, you know this is a good it. phone to recommend once that one that once that date arrives. If that date wasn't do you, do you really months think out, you 5G know what I mean? Five G rollout is going to be a, a. I think Verizon's going to push it like yeah, it is. they are, but I think it's just going to be for marketing. I don't think it's going to actually. I think I think Verizon's going to push five G. Oh yeah, it's definitely. Because they want to be the first. They want to be the this first. This is their first phone that's announced on the network to do that. You better believe mm -hmm. they're. But this isn't a phone and, for like the people who are going to be buying this phone. Don't no 5G from 4G. But that's if somebody thing. just walks into the Verizon store and Verizon says, we have a brand new network that's yeah. crazy go, faster oh than my anything gosh, yes, that is out it. there, yeah. that person's going to be like, yeah. oh, it's faster? Okay. Um, <sighs> I will I will give this phone some credit for being an affordable Verizon device because yeah. Yeah, it's not that right. I have phone envy for like devices like this. I actually, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just be clear. I have Verizon envy. I, I love Verizon's network and clearly they do some great stuff uh, in terms of the speeds on their LTE and whatnot. It's not something that I get on Project Fi or on T-Mobile. So I have to give Verizon that much credit. And if 5G does come out on this device, I, I'm still skeptical that it's going to be a first generation um a first generation like success on other phones like for example it wasn't the uh the g8 is supposed to the lg g8 is supposed to be sprint's first 5g phone i'm not convinced that it's going to be that great on the outset um but at least you have verizon's network which has arguably the best lte right now in america right yeah so for 480 have at it if you if you have a phone like uh, our our user from earlier saying that he has a samsung galaxy s7 then for 480 dollars you can get a phone on verizon that gives you really good speeds and it has that expandability even if this is the last generation that you're going to have these particular mods at least for now yeah do we know for a fact that this is the last generation to have these mods as motorola said i saw much? a couple of people saying that the moto mods at least as we know them right now were only meant to work for three different generations for up to three generations of moto phones yeah, we'd be so about there. yeah yep exactly huh interesting all right so that's the moto z3 you're working on a review that's going to be posting soonish right very, very soon. I was working on it today, as a matter of fact. Awesome. Uh, so reviews coming around. Uh, check Joshua's feed uh, for that. I've got one this Saturday on the new screensavers. And then also, we, we kind of talked a lot about the the Note 9 last week because that was the you know post announcement. Michael Fisher, uh, Mr. Mobile was on, <laughs> and he uh, you know talked about his that impressions. Guy. What were your impressions, or what it was okay, so far? So 
All right. So um, now that I now that I have my own sort of way of covering devices and covering tech and and on my channel, um, I'm taking a different angle when it comes to my reviews. I will try to do more conventional reviews, ones that you've seen me do in the past, uh, mainly for my freelance work, like with Pocket Now. But what I'm going to do with the Note 9 is ask the question that I think is really hard to answer with just how great our smartphones are these days. Who is this for? And I'm going to do what my best to figure out maybe like the top five different users who would actually benefit from a phone like this because the Note 9 is one of those tough devices to answer that question for because it does so much. And I just, I'm not sure. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's a spectacular device. And to say that it's what the Note 8 should have been or what the Note 7 should have been is an easy thing to say. But what I will give Samsung so much credit for are the things that most people probably won't even harp on when they are looking at the Note 9. And that is uh, the Bluetooth and the S Pen. Mm -hmm. It's probably something that most users are not really going to clamor for other than the camera shutter button. And then there's the processor cooling that as a smartphone gamer of sorts, uh, it is actually that good. Now, uh, granted, Fortnite is not one of those games that I really want to play on the Note 9. I play plenty of other things, and I just, I just, I'm, I suck at Fortnite. That's my biggest thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, I, I have felt this phone get warm, and as other phones would slow down because of the heat happening underneath the surface, this one just keeps trucking along. And I feel like that that cooling system is actually doing its job, and I hope that we see it in more devices. Uh, the cooling is great, the uh, larger battery is great, and it's finally, like what I give Samsung a lot of credit for is proving to us that, you know what, we were right. Give us thicker phones if it means better performance and more longevity. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Note 9 is kind of proving to me, at least. So it's a very practical device, despite its price point. Um, if you have a Note 8, you probably don't need to upgrade to this phone, uh, unless the things that are enhanced are that much better for you. Uh, but aside from that, I think it is a stellar device. I think that it is definitely the one to beat right now, especially for those who can afford it. And that's that's the big critical point right there, is that it's a you know it's a one thousand dollar and up device. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I've seen a lot of posts lately about like, yeah, you know, it, it, no, kind of normalizing this, this upper, you know, higher than $1,000 price. And a lot of other people kind of being pretty critical about that and just saying like, don't normalize this. This is far too much for this price category. You're talking about the right people, like who the Note 9 is made for. I imagine one of those has to be people who want to use their mobile device to do things like vlogging and and take mm -hmm. you know photo sharing that sort of stuff you you posted on youtube kind of a, a, a longer video that you edited together from the vlogging perspective would that fall fall into that category do you think and why? Absolutely. Um, there, there are a few quirks to the camera. If you're going to be a vlogger using the Note 9, there are a few quirks to the camera. For example, it's really hard to, not really hard, there's, there's just an extra step you have to take in order to lock the exposure and the focus when you're doing video. Uh, for example, you have to you have to tap on the screen uh, in order to get to set your focus point, then it stays, but then you also have to very slightly adjust the uh, exposure slider so that the exposure stays the same. So those those little things are addressed in other phones a lot better, like for example, LG's V series. But as far as just the general vlogging experience goes, um, you have really high quality video, especially in the rear camera when you go with 4K. Now, 4K 60 frames is not stabilized, so keep that in mind. But the, again, the uh, but, but, but aside from that, probably my favorite part about the camera experience on here as a vlogger is that the front facing camera ever since the Samsung Galaxy S7 can record in 2K. And that I think is um, something that Samsung should be touting way more. No other phone comes even close to that. And if they did, the uh, the, the focal length is way too narrow. And I, granted, I do use a clip-on wide angle lens in order to achieve that more classic vlogging look. Uh, but the quality is just really, it, the quality is really great. The, uh, the S Pen with that, uh, a remote shutter button is really easy to use if you were to set up the phone somewhere and then become the star of your video and just get in front of the camera, hit that button on the S Pen a couple times, and then you're you're recording and you're you have all of your shots set up. Oh wow, it was raining so hard in New York. Uh, yeah. Shot. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that's the front-facing camera without a clip-on lens on there. It's still it's just wide enough. I was recording it in 2K, which means that the uh, the the detail is going to be there. So mm. I actually really enjoy the Note 9 for vlogging for sure. If I didn't have any other camera on me and I just had this phone in my pocket, I would feel pretty secure. And you got the oh, slow, slow mo. mo. Use your slow mo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, yes, yeah. cool. So again. 
folks should uh, definitely uh, follow Joshua. I'm assuming YouTube.com slash Joshua Vergara is where you go mm-hmm. to find your Note 9 review when that happens. I get mine. I, apparently, I'm, it's going to be delivered tomorrow. So oh, I, will, I will get one tomorrow, and I'll start messing around with it and have more thoughts, I do have I think, one final tip for anybody who might be watching that wants to try vlogging with this phone. Uh, don't be afraid to use the tools. Like, I... I said that I use a clip-on wide-angle lens for the front-facing camera, but you can always pick up a moment lens for the rear if you want a more wide-angle lens. Uh, Don't be afraid to use whatever is in the repertoire because Samsung is probably the best company in Android that gets supported by third-party companies uh, for accessories and whatnot. So don't be afraid to use that kind of stuff if it achieves the look that you want. So that's a top tip from the the smartphone vlogger over here. (laughs) (laughs) Pro tip. Yeah, good pro tip. All right, awesome. Uh, flow. What, yeah. do, what do we What do we think we know about? So now we got a different <laughs> kind of Rumi device category world. we're talking yeah. about here. So <laughs> smart displays. Lenovo has one out right now. JBL has one right out right now that you can buy, and pretty soon maybe Google might have its own very own smart display. Oh, really? So apparently there's some rumor mongering about the Pixel event having a official Google smart display product. This report comes from Nikkei sourced from supply chain, uh, which says Google's preparing for an aggressive holiday release, 3 million units in the first batch. That's not really hard to imagine. The whole, I mean, just thinking about Samsung is, you know, planning on launching its own thing. And, you know, we've we still got Amazon, a major player in the space. So it's definitely going to be a battle, a battle of the assistants yet mm-hmm. again for this holiday season. And that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, it'll be here before we even know it. Also, there's a little bit of mongering about an updated Chromecast, which was so revealed <laughs> in reports filed. <laughs> Uh, to the FCC. So uh, the Chromecast has got a five gigahertz antenna to improve Wi-Fi performance, which I will definitely uh, appreciate because I tell you, sometimes that casting, you know, you really miss an important moment. It just takes so long. Also, Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE built in. And uh, fun fact, it appears we haven't really had a Chromecast update since 2016 when we got the Ultra in. So... We are kind of due. Yeah, totally. We're due for something a little new. Uh, also, lastly, uh, there is the JBL Link bar, sound bar. So sound bars are the cool Forgot hip, about that. new thing now to put into your house because it's a bar of sound. Which makes sense, <laughs> right? I mean, you don't have a lot of room. Oh, it, does, it doesn't It does serve drinks? Yes. Oh, okay. It does not serve drinks, no. A no shot skis with this bar. Dang it. Uh, but it was revealed at Google I.O. and now it's up for pre-order $399, so 400 bucks. Ships in October. Surprise, surprise. Probably going to go on sale immediately after a so-called Pixel event. Yeah, JBL Link Bar, that's Google Assistant, of course, Android TV, all baked into it. I forgot that they even mentioned this at Google I.O. I know I was excited about it at the time, and then I swiftly forgot about it. So it's maybe I wasn't. Bar. It's, it's, a sound it's, bar. A cool, it's a cool little product, <laughs> well, yeah. I think. Yes. I th- and I think it's at, at $400, it's a little... Uh, it's a little pricey, right? A little you, pricey, you have to buy it because you need it. You, you know, <clears throat> yeah. you, sure. you need a sound bar and you want the added convenience of Assistant, and then you can do all of that fun Chromecasty stuff with it, which... Yeah. Yeah, but I think all, all of these little notes and bits, none of them were surprising at all. Um, at all. In fact, I'm shocked that it took this long for news of Google's uh, smart display to come out this late in the year when, you know, we saw them as early as CES with, from Lenovo. From other, you know, you had the one in, in the studio a couple yeah. weeks ago. I want to uh, I want to know what the conversation was like behind the door with those manufacturers. You mean when they were coming out with the smart display first. before Google? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that Google, Google was just like, like hey, you guys can do first yeah. round. And- to see, just to maybe to see what the reaction was, maybe, and see what they did with it. I, mean, I want to know been- why they got the, ex- like, why Lenovo got the exclusive to be, like, be the first. I want to know. Because <clears throat> yeah. Google wants to be perceived as uh, cooperative and not owning yeah, with the first piece of every single thing it does with Android. And That's a fair place a, to go. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's one also, way that they Ron, can prove I totally to. Interrupted you. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. I'm just saying I wasn't surprised by any of this. And and this and Google smart display is going to destroy everybody's. I think. I think that selling three million. I think this thing is going to sell like hotcakes. I think it's uh, going to match very nicely with the other Google Home speakers. Probably. Yeah, Perhaps probably come so. in a nice gray or coral cloth. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> probably so. Or what colors will we have this year? We had like it was like a blue the first year. I don't know. 
We got to figure know, out what the color is going to be. Red this year. with a yellow S pen that sticks out of it. No, that's Samsung. Oh, dang it. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Ron, right. what you got? A little bit more, a little bit, another phone to talk about before we move on. Uh, so over at XDA Developers, uh, the folks over there viewed photos of Huawei's unannounced Mate 20, and then they developed some renders to, sh to show off what they saw. And so these renders show a display notch, but much smaller in size. Actually, it's more similar to the uh, uh, to the essential phones, little little teardrop notch, as they the call button. it. Or yeah, a water drop notch. I like to call it a teardrop notch. Because um, <laughs> you're crying that your phone has exactly. a notch on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's also uh, important to note in, in this in this Huawei phone, the speaker is above the notch. That's interesting. Um, it does have a 3.5 uh, millimeter headphone jack. Uh, it's got USB-C. Uh, glass back supports wireless charging. And three rear-facing cameras. Not one, not two, but three rear-facing cameras like the P20 Pro. And an announcement of this is expected to come out in two to three months uh, so whether you want to believe these renders or not, uh, it's up to you. But it sounds probable. It seems, it seems, it seems like something Huawei would do. Um, yeah. yeah, so we'll see what happens in two months. All right. Okay, yeah. cool. Right on. I don't know if I have very much to add on yeah, that one. Joshua, does that phone excite you? Yeah. Those three rear-facing cameras get you, get you going? <laughs> It does, but I don't like the way that they're shown there. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's if you scroll down, L. Victor, you can see it. There's a there's an image of it about halfway down. And yeah, I didn't like the, that at all. Like, having them all in a line the way the P20 Pro has it, I mean, that's that's kind of cool. It gave it a nice look. But this just seems like, you know, put them all in the same go. place. It, I, I don't like that at all. What is the, There are four <laughs> holes in the back. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> um, it just doesn't appeal to me at all. Um, and also, my clip-on wide-angle lens wouldn't reach that. To just well, saying. yeah, you'd have to get your special Huawei wide angle, Huawei wide angle, Huawei lens. wide angle. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Huawei! Never not funny. Never not funny. A wide <laughs> way, yeah. Um, that 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 lens configuration it looks like it looks like a stove. Yes. Yes. I would like to right? boil water on one. I would like to make pasta on the other. Yeah, one of them's an LED flash, so maybe it produces a little bit of heat. I don't know. <laughs> Enough ah. for fry an egg. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure if it's that much, but hey, that could be another uh, differentiating factor. Uh, we got an email from Michael who says, hey, great show. Just wondering which smartwatch would you recommend? Tick Watch Pro, Samsung Gear S3 Frontier LTE, Samsung Galaxy Watch LTE. That, of course, was just announced like a week and a half ago. Or a watch that we don't even know exists yet officially, the future Google Pixel Watch says, I have a Samsung Galaxy S9. We don't know a whole lot about the Pixel Watch because it doesn't exist yet, uh, but apparently there will be three versions. Uh, a new Snapdragon Wear 3100, um, always on assistant, of course, heart rate sensor. There's really not a whole lot we know there, right? Um, the Galaxy Watch, though, Samsung did mm -hmm. announce that. And since you have a Galaxy S9 in tow, yeah. it might work really impeccably with your Samsung phone. So maybe it it's would. just worth con considering for that alone. Yeah, I, that, that would almost be my my suggestion right now, only from the sense that, I mean, I love Android, obviously, don't get me wrong, but I'm not 100% convinced that, wa it's that, gonna be that Google's... It. You know, Android <laughs> Wear, Wear OS, whatever they're calling it these days, um, on the Pixel Watch is going to equal the, the kind of the what Samsung has done with its Tizen uh, running on a watch. I mean, yeah. it's been so successful with the yeah. S3 uh, running on a watch. It's a really great uh, interface, and people just seem to love it. And so if you're going to get that with the Galaxy Watch and you got an yeah. S9, that seems like a really great pick. Yeah. But I also don't know very much about the Tick Watch Pro. Is anyone here... Privy to the tick watch, Joshua is raising his hand. Indeed, Joshua, yes. what, what I, do you know about I it? I have a, I have a review of it over on my channel. Just a shameless plug, real quick. <laughs> um, I, I have, I have to give the tick watch pro a lot of credit because, or rather, Mobvoi is the company that made it. Um, right. Granted, this this concept of the essential screen, where it is just a a more an old school type of LCD screen that is layered on top of the original AMOLED screen, it's not a new concept. It's something that was done, I believe. I'm trying to remember if it was Casio who did it, but another smartwatch did it using Android Wear. Um, so it's not a new idea, but it's a great idea, and I love it when companies. Um, get creative in order to make things like battery life, things that are supposed to be practical about smartwatches, uh, actually achievable. 
And even though this is using an old uh, processor uh, that generally on a watch without the essential screen would end up being maybe two days worth of battery life on a good day, uh, it's great to have a way of extending that battery life. Yeah. Now, Samsung also has the Galaxy Watch where they apparently have a new processor in it. They're not saying much about it, but that processor is supposed to get you five to six days more battery life. Um, so what four to six rather. Uh, what I would say to you, Michael, um, is wait for September 10. September 10, Qualcomm apparently has something, they're apparently going to announce the new processor. And if it is able to get this kind of battery life that Samsung kind of jumped the gun with on the Galaxy Watch, then that means that the Pixel Watch is going to be a real contender. Meanwhile, Take Watch Pro, it's a great watch just at the wrong time because it's using. Uh, earlier specs, last year's specifications, or really old specifications, really. Um, but it does have good battery life. So if it's between all these four, I would say take the Gear S3 Frontier out of the out of the equation yeah, I would agree. and um, check out the other three. Wait for, set, wait for Qualcomm to make their announcement, and that will inform you on whether the Pixel Watch is what you should get. Yep. Yes, agreed. Listen to him, Michael. He knows what he's talking about. And then let us know what you pick. Triple uh, A at twit.tv. All mm -hmm. right. Send Let's, us a uh, wrist pick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wrist a, fix. A, a wrist fee. A wrist pick. <laughs> wrist fee? I don't know. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Huge LegalZoom user since well before LegalZoom was a sponsor on this network. Personally, we used them for our uh, to create our will when we had our first uh, child. And so it was super easy. Fact. Most Americans don't actually have a will. You might not have one. 20 years ago, it wasn't a shocking statement to say that. You had to find a trustworthy attorney. You had to pay them by the hour, and they would then draft your will. It was a whole process, and it was not cheap. These days, there is no excuse. LegalZoom has made it easy to create your own. That's why more than a million people have used LegalZoom for their estate planning needs. It's a national make-a-will month at LegalZoom.com, so now it's your turn to take care of your family and take control of your assets with an estate plan. Nobody wants to do this because it's kind of hard to face face this reality and, and set this up and just take your brain there and go, well, if I'm not here, what happens? But it's super important. Um, you know you need to do it. You just need to do it. It starts with a will or a living trust. If you don't know which one is right for you, it's not a problem. LegalZoom's network of independent attorneys will advise you on what's best for you and best for your family. Plus, LegalZoom is not a law firm, so you'll never pay those expensive hourly rates. Make things a lot easier on your family when you're gone. Check out LegalZoom's last will and living testament estate plans. You can do that now. You should do that now during National Make-A-Will Month at LegalZoom.com. And use promo code AAA, that's AAA, for special savings. That's LegalZoom.com. Use code AAA. You're going to get special savings if you do that. LegalZoom, where life meets Legal. That's LegalZoom.com, promo code AAA, and we thank LegalZoom for their support of All About Android. All right, just a few stories in the app section, so let's dive in. Oh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that, I believe, was Mateo. Mateo's not on this show, though, right? <laughs> not that I know of, anyway. I think that may have been the Mateo's hardware shack. <laughs> I've been One day, Mateo's weeks. name is just going to show up yeah. on the Yes, marquee. right. He's, he's going he's, he's to figure out his way. See, producer credit. Just. He's going to go to his way out of the show. <laughs> and I've, I've been gone for a few weeks. Yeah, <laughs> give Victor yeah, a sure. break here. Yeah. No, it's okay. That's, think, things aren't where I left them. <laughs> That's true. That's fair. It's probably That's totally fair. true. That's fair. Can, right, can, uh, I just, can, I, can I just say real quick yeah. that uh, I haven't been here in a while and I'm all for patriotism. That American flag going by was a little surprising to me. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> Really did kind of come out of nowhere, didn't it's, it? It's but, Victor's yeah. way of distracting from from getting criticized. Look at America. <laughs> right. Did it, Look did over it work? Apparently, <laughs> yeah. It's did there. until we started talking about it. Okay, well now we got to talk about confidentiality <laughs> because right. that's an important thing when we're talking about <laughs> our email. Ahem, it's a very important, serious thing, which is why Google revealed back in April that it would introduce a confidentiality mode to Gmail because, of course, that would make sense. The company that has been reading your email this long now is giving you a confidentiality mode. Yay! Mm -hmm. uh, so nice. the mode is here. It includes password and two-factor uh, 
protected messages, which means both password and two-factor authentication, if that makes sense. So you can have a little double whammy on there. Uh, you can send messages and attachments with an expiration date, a la Inspector Gadget style. Mm -hmm. uh, you can revoke accesses at any point to emails and things. And those who receive the message won't be able to forward, copy, print, or download the message, which is amazing. And this is how I'm gonna send all of my gossip through email from now on. Um, Perfect, perfect, perfect. But you know it's not bulletproof. Oh, oh, it is not bulletproof because it, like Snapchat and Instagram, it won't prevent anybody from taking screenshots or photos of what's right. going on your screen. So you're still not that confidential like right. you think you are. You can, you can prevent someone from like actually copying text on the yes. screen, let's say, but anybody can pull out a camera and take a picture of the screen. Yes. And you're kind of screwed. And the good news is protected emails work uh, to any other email account, not just Gmail accounts. You can still use the code to unlock. But of course, the EFF, which is the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, has said that this does not sound like very secure, confidential Gmail after all. Uh, it is unencrypted end to end, which is really really what you need is that tin can to tin can and nothing else <laughs> outside of the tin can connection. It's what's happening. And also if you use an SMS passcode, you are basically giving Google the receipt recipients phone number. Oh, the recipients. So they know yeah. who's getting the code on the other side so they can unlock it with Tufa. Um, so, you know, it's not completely, but if you are worried about evil doers, like <laughs> people you're trying to hide from getting Snoopy stuff. Snoopers. Snoopy snoopers. Yeah. As long as you trust the other person on the other end. Uh, and if they betray you, I mean, this is your warning. We are giving you your warning. Be, car be careful who you trust. Um, or trust no one. Or trust no one. Yeah. As you may have learned from our Know How IoT episode about smart home security. <laughs> Especially don't trust anyone when it yes, comes to IoT. Except me and Megan Maroney. That's true. That's true. Very true. <laughs> Uh, but this is a cool feature. I mean, this this like many other security, you know, approaches, it's not bulletproof, it's not foolproof, no. but it's not better than not. All. It's Can better than not using it, right? So yes. as long as it gives you as long as you operate in that realm, then you're probably gonna yeah. be okay, you know. Con consider that it's not one hundred percent, but it's better than like what you've been doing, probably. It's true. Or if you wanna have a super secret conversation with like your parents over email. Perfect. <laughs> Why? And Google. I don't even want to know. I was going to ask, I was going to inquire, but I'm not. Well, even some gonna... people can, I mean, you know, email is a form of communication. Uh, and... I have super secret conversations with my mommy every day. <laughs> Confidential. The, you don't end to end encrypt your combos with your parents. I'm just saying. No, I don't. Oh. I PGP my conversations with my you parents. You should in this day and age. You never oh know God. who's the, peeking that's what, in. That's what the, the letter P in PGP stands for, is parents. For parental, yeah. for parental guidance. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're right. on desktop, can't you print it out still anyway? Isn't that like sure. the original screenshot is printing? <laughs> like, yeah. No, you I can't mean, print I mean, it. You I don't can't think print you can it. Print. You, you can't. Oh. It but says wonder, it doesn't allow. But I mean... At the same time, it's very easy. But you can screenshot it and then print it. Yeah, it's very easy <laughs> in modern, well, in any OS to take to do a key, a really key stroke and it just takes it a really screenshot is. of the thing, and then you can print that out. So Listen, there are I, obvious I have, ways around this. I have a Logitech keyboard that's been purchased within the last couple of years, and it has a print screen button. Print print, print screen? Per, per, no, it says print screen. screen. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're uh, they're Ron going ahead ponying up on the extra ink yeah, or whatever. Well, Ron yeah, paid good money for that keyboard. <laughs> yes, got the full print and the, screen. The, the print screen is premium. The, print screen. Is this a first, by the way? Like, is this? Uh, did any other company that die, that 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 deals with email ever do something? I'm like sure this? Microsoft this first, has right? something because they have Azure and like an entire platform for. Oh, but uh, that's on the enterprise level. Yeah, it's right? true. Uh, okay. I don't know at the consumer level. I mean, I'm sure there was, there is. And I just don't know about it because I've been sending uh, unsecured emails all this time. <laughs> what have you been doing? All those people that are snooping on you actively. Oh, they are. <laughs> I have accepted it. I know. It's a, it's a crazy world we live in. Yeah. But it's good to have it, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> no, it's good to have this feature, yes. Well, yeah. I thought you meant Not the other thing. Network, so no, like, Chase, this feature. No, no, no. Uh, it's oh. also good to have redesigns of Google's apps. Sure thing. We're seeing the whole, we're oh, seeing the movement good. of the white rounded corners kind of world of Google. And the next target is Google Fit, which 
By the way, I'm a happy daily user of Google Fit. Same. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be getting the, the all white redesign following material theming. Uh, it's going to track move minutes, which is basically a step counter and heart points when rigorous activity is detected. Uh -huh. um, and it's going to use a familiar ring system to track this. And uh, we were talking about the Pixel Watch a little earlier. Could this redesign be happening to coincide with the upcoming Pixel Watch? I think we'll so, Bob. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I think you but, might be uh, on something. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, but hey, I love Google Fit, so I love seeing it get seeing it get a little uh, little little refresh. So. Really I'm happy for the circles. Fit. I need some completing circles. I've been so jealous of my Apple Watch friends. You know, they just like they they lead or uh, they cheer each other on through their Apple watches. They go, good job. They share their, you know, their they progress. Share their, they do, and they, they go, compete. good job to each other. And it's just like this community. And, you know, here I am alone on the elliptical with nobody to share my data with oh, except man. Google. What is, what, that's not life. It's that's not, not living. It's lonely. Yeah. And I just wanted some rings. At least this, these rings will help me feel less alone. I can have the satisfaction of completing a ring. <laughs> what do we think of Google's like a general kind of redesign uh, material theming approach? Do we like this new era? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I love it. I think I it love looks it. really great. It's it clean. looks a lot more polished. I mm -hmm. was just the other just the other day I got the I, I got the login screen for my Gmail and I was like, man, this looks like a nice app. <laughs> like like the, the, it was a, it was on the website you know but it was that square but it looks much better than the old login like it, it feels more warm it feels more inviting yeah. now yeah i agree uh, yeah. it does feel more inviting That's i also nice really like the new font yeah. uh also kind of loosely related to yes. this google is apparently working on a fitness assistant yes. so think of like assistant but you know with all the ai stuff happening but uh, related to fitness called Google Coach. Maybe that won't be the launch, but Android Police has an article about this, about Google Coach. There's also another um, kind of uh, another name that they've given it internally. I can't remember. I didn't put that in my notes, but uh, not just exercise and workout routines, but also nutrition, food recommendations. It might suggest alternatives when you miss a workout, alternative ways that you can kind of uh, get you know get exercise in somehow. Run for your life analyze, for forty yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a zombie behind you. Keep running. Uh, analyze your day based on your calendar to determine how many meals you might need to plan. Help you with that, and uh, of course, an initial focus on Wear OS and the integration mm -hmm. there, and then broadening it out. From Here there. it is. It's dun, coming. Dun, dun, this dun. is the rebranding. It's coming. This is how to use the next wave of of assistant of the, of the wearable. Of wear. of well, yeah. Wear. I guess it's both, right? Um, is 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 this something that we want our watch to be need it. notifying we us about to. all the time? This is this has been missing forever yep. because yeah, the, the metrics this. that you get from an app like Google Fit um, are great. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but what you need aside from that are the tips to be better and that that's never really been a part of it so if you get if you have a sleep graph for example I, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to sleep uh when you have a sleep graph and it tells you that your deep sleep has only been around 20 percent. by the way it should be pretty like quite a bit higher than that um what it should be telling you is how to achieve that better sleep mm -hmm. and most applications most uh, fitness apparatus don't do that and if this is going to be what does that, then great. Um, nutritional uh, advice, fitness advice, stuff like that. I just think Google Coach is a terrible name. Yeah, I don't like that Because it sounds like they're teaching me how to search. <laughs> yeah. And I have to say with this fitness stuff and just like the whole general well-being industry, there's a lot around like what you could be doing instead. And I think that a lot of these apps are not asking all of the questions. Why aren't you sleeping well? Are you dealing with trauma? Are you working a lot? Like there's just all sorts of things and questions. I don't think, an, I don't think an app is equipped to a question if you're dealing with trauma. Okay, or obviously I went a little overboard there, but I'm yeah, just saying. That, that, that was a bit of a stretch. I it mean, was like, a bit of a stretch, I get, but I'm just get, saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying a lot of these apps purport to like have everything that you possibly need and there's a lot of factors that play into this and so I just get very worried about a tech company being like you know behind it and I'm you Here's know, I worry about that we know everything and how it's going to how people are going to use it interact with it what they're going to feel from it I mean there was you're yeah yeah, you're, you're absolutely right Flo I think I think that, that you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there because um, context is really important and if you are going to literally be tracking things that you consume, things that you do, then that provides that needed context. So if you're sleeping at 2 a.m. 
that's obviously going to be something that I should say. Maybe sleep a little bit earlier. Yeah. If you're not if you're not getting enough, let's say magnesium or vitamins in your diet, then that's something you should know. That way, yeah. it can tell you that you should probably take magnesium right before bed. So, like stuff like that. Yeah, or like or like dr- like even drink some tea. Mm. You know. Like a little tea no, could really right help just, <laughs> just warm you up and of help you feel you nice are. inside. I mean, I don't know. That's I just I I want more from a coach. If it's if you're gonna coach me, like be my friend. Know what what's going on with me. That's, don't just that's be my coach. Be my friend. Yeah, assistant. I mean, you already have Google all my friend. data. <laughs> a Google, Google friend. friend. There it is. You'll need no other friend. It's coming. It's just the assistant in twenty twenty five. I Hi, said it here first. I'm Google. Let's be friends. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. I'm friend Google. Ah! Runs out of the room. And Jennifer <laughs> Tilly's in this movie for some reason. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Uh, Ron, you got the last one. Yeah, I slipped this one in yeah. under the wire because I thought it was interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it just shows uh, an example of blogger clickbaity kind of taking something and running with it, but also it's kind of interesting. So The Verge had an article that's headlined, Google's developing, a, developing an experimental podcast app called Shortwave. Hmm. And I saw this headline a couple hours ago and I was like, but they just released the podcast app. Why are they doing something new? And if you go on and read the article, this is all based on the fact that Google filed um, uh, a a, a trademark Trademark. filing for an app called Shortwave, which uh, it's described as, quote unquote, allowing users to search, access and play digital audio files and share links to audio files. So it doesn't specify podcasts specifically, but, you know, audio files, podcasts, that sort of thing. Uh, The Verge actually reached out to Google and they, they confirmed they said that this app was being developed by the company's Area 120 or Area yeah 120 incubator. Um, and it's unrelated to any existing Google projects. And they said that it's uh, shortwave is helping users discover and consume spoken word audio in new ways. Mm. So mm. Google never actually said this is a podcast app, right? So read the articles. Don't always go by the headlines, but it is interesting that they're developing. They have an inc- they have this incubator that's developing applications. They're trademarking the names. Clearly, these this is like the Google. I want to say minor leagues or maybe on deck circle. And maybe we see some advancements in um, voice, you know, an audio based search, spoken word search that get rolled into the podcast app. Who knows? Um, but I thought it was interesting either way. Yeah. Or it's a network for spoken word poets. Mm, yeah. Can't beat poets. Um, As a former life of mine. <laughs> Google well, Poet Coach. You would fit right in at, at Google Shortwave. There's coffee, uh, and there's a smoky atmosphere, and it's always dark. And you're wearing a beret. <laughs> um, but, but this does really fit very closely into mm-hmm. uh, what we talked about a couple of months ago, Google's kind of ambitions, and they said as much in their yeah. their new podcast movement of making audio more searchable, reaching inside of audio content, kind of bring it more into the search engine. Um, so this really sounds a lot like that. So maybe this is just another angle of it, or maybe this is just how they're building that out uh, behind the scenes. But they have nothing more to comment on that. So look the other way. By the way, Android Auto and Google Podcasts are working. I just wanted to say that to everyone because I know I've been complaining about that, but it just happened to start work like two weeks ago before I was here at the studio. Uh, And now I can access. Nice. Yes. Right on. So. Excellent. And now brrr, it's time for the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Dust off this droid. Arena. Fingerprinty phone. So I can show some oh, apps on it. Oh, I have a, oh, a yellow squeegee. That's better here than my pants. Uh, Twit.to right, slash triple A poll 382. Pants are never as clean as you think. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see here, I think, anyways. Uh, Android Sensors, a.k.a. Sensor Lab, wins with 65% of the votes. Sensor Lab was Michael Fisher's app. It was a pretty, it cool, was. It was a pretty cool looking app, got to say. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not surprised. Second place, Pixel Shortcuts. That was my app, 23%. Third place, driving detective at thirteen percent. That was wrong. So that means I I lost, and what that means to the uh, arena standings? Quite interesting. Wade County in the chat room, not only tracking them but adding, giving some added value statistics this week. Uh, so we're thirty three <laughs> weeks into the into the season, um, less than twenty to go. Dang. So we're we're, we're you know I can't believe that. I know it's crazy. 
Um, guests are running away with it. They're in the lead with 102 points. I'm Whoa. in second place with 81 points. Wow. Flo continues to be in third place with 72 points, although Jason's knocking on the door with 71 yeah. points. That could change this week. Yeah. Um, and the little added statistics there, guests have won four in a row, and they've also won five of the last six. Wow. So, Joshua, no pressure at all to keep the guest streak alive. I was about alive. to say. <laughs> yeah. Listen, if you, oh, were, if you were wearing an Atlanta Braves uniform, I would be throwing at you right now. But <laughs> Did you just... I'm, Huh? That's a it's a baseball reference. I know. So a, I know. We, it, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to knock him down. I'm just telling you. You got in that situation. You got to throw at him. Anyway. Yeah. When you get knocked down, you got to get up again. Don't yeah. ever let them knock you down. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that means I, I kicked things off since I lost last week. So. All right. Um, I have it installed, although I have not messed around with it. I meant to, but I got I got sucked into a wormhole with Joshua's app, and so I didn't I quite say, get to it. I, I Please remember say that, app. viewers. Just yeah. saying. It's a tease. <laughs> So I gotta say, I stumbled upon this app, and I'm, I might have chosen it because I like the app's icon so much. Uh, it is called the app is called Shorty, and um, actually, can you pull up the Google Play Store listing uh, before we go into the app? There, there we go. Uh, oh yeah. Oh. That's a great little South Parky kind of. Wow. Uh, that's a great little icon. Yeah. It is, uh, if if I knew a guy named Shorty, uh, that's what he'd look like. So <laughs> Shorty is a fun and easy way to make shortcuts, to, not only to any. Um, uh, any website or any um, any sort of cloud document, but any file on your on your phone as it is, period, and um, just make an easy shortcut to go into the desktop. So, Jason, can you go to your file explorer? Oh, my file explorer. Yeah. Do you have a file explorer on that phone? Uh, I believe so. I think just files. Yeah, go to files. Okay. Cool. Okay, and so just take uh, go to that Fortnite install and uh, long tap on that. All oh, right. Wait, did you run? Have you run Shorty yet? Uh, no, this is the first time. Oh, okay. Go back. Go back to the main screen. Sorry. Let's just let's go back. I mean, back I, I launched it, but it right, says so I need to go so, into it. So yeah, so it says you launch it, Shorty, and it says it looks like you've not created a shortcut yet. Head to your favorite application, share some portion of the data, then select pin to the home screen, and we will talk. <laughs> share icon. Hang on. Don't do it. Share icon usually looks like this one, so tap on the share icon there. It goes, good job. Now do it in another application. <laughs> oh, that was practice. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. All right. So, so go back to your file explorer. Okay. And um and that's long tap on that and let's hit the share icon oh, there. I, I've done this before. Yeah. I, oh there hey, go. what do you know? And there oh. it is, pinned to home screen for shorty. So you tap on you tap on shorty, and now you got to give it access to your file so it can do that. That's fine. And so now what you can do is you can you can change the tag, you can change the icon style, you can customize it, you can customize the, the how it looks. Um, you know, you can use your thumbnail or custom text. I did a shortcut to a JPEG and it and it pulled the JPEG in as the icon itself. Uh, since this file isn't an image file, it's using the default kind of one, but you can play with the colors and all that sort of stuff. Um, really nice design, nice interface. Like the guy did, the guy did a good job on this. Um, so he said, okay. And once you do that, hit the check mark in the upper right hand corner. And now it does this little thing where you, you can you can add it automatically, or you could have grabbed it and placed it where you wanted to, and there it is. And now it does. So there it is. That's all it does. So if you open up Shorty again. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, here I'll go yeah. back to that. Got it. Yeah. Oh, there. You go back to Shorty. There, there's a list. Of, so it keeps track of all your shortcuts as well too. So it's a great little, uh, it's a great little um, uh, tool to to create shortcuts to not only uh, you know cloud documents or web destinations, but actual physical files. I was uh, I was at a I was at my that pinball tournament and I had a document with all a bunch of pinball tips and tricks and I took me forever to figure out how to make a shortcut to go to directly to that with shorty I could have done it in a couple easy taps. Yeah. Now here's the fun thing, all right? This app is tiny, it's well designed, it's by an independent uh, developer. If we go to the Google Play Store listing, if you scroll down, you can see that it's got uh, under installs, it's got 100. Nice. Okay? I think we can make this guy's day. I think I think if everyone watching or listening to all about Android just downloads and installs Shorty. I'm not even saying vote for it. Just download and install it, and let's give uh, this developer a, a little bit of a treat. Let's Michael. get it up to 500. Can we do that? Shorty. So she's called Shorty. Yeah, the the guy who developed it looks like his name is Michael or Michael. Yeah. So support your independent devs. This is pretty cool. Um, like I said, vote for it. Don't vote for it. I don't know. But just install it and give it a shot. I'd love to see us to move the needle on that install number. There you go. It's always That's fun to know. Move the we, needle. We, and, I have a feel, 
And I have a feeling that if you download and install it, you might like it. Maybe you'll vote for it. So yeah. it's always fun to know that, like, on some of these apps, that that developer wakes up the next morning and they're like, eh, "I'm just gonna check my console." Yes. Whoa, what happened? Yeah. This is way. <laughs> what happened? Why did we just suddenly get 300? You know, then they got to do their little detective work and then they figure it out. It's awesome. I like to I like to call it a uh, the all about Android effect. Yeah, the bump. The, yeah, the, the bump. AAA, AAA bump. Effect. Yeah. Play bump. Yeah, yes. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so awesome. check out Shorty. There you go. Right on. Shorty. All right, Flo, what you Cheers. got? Cheers. All right. I brought a game to the arena today because Josh said this morning he was going to bring a game, so I figured I would I figured I would go head You're to like, head. Oh yeah. Uh actually, Victor, if you don't mind doing <laughs> the play, I know I was, I have to set it up on here. I don't want any information. Um, so actually, I got this uh, game idea from a friend of the show, Mark Bersteiner, who uh, mm -hmm. sent me a leak to this game a while back. And it's three ninety nine, And it's a fun little game. Oh. And it reminds me of Treacherous with little characters. Uh, so here's how you play it. Let's see if we can show you on the over... How's that? Can you see that? I'm going to push the brightness up just a tiny bit more because it's a really dark screen. And I'm going to show you how this is played. So, you know, Tetris, you have to get rid of all the blocks before they increase upwards. So in this one, what you have to do in hold down is you're going down a hole and you will see numbers on each of these blocks. And that's how many times it's going to take to get rid of those blocks. And so they get harder and harder as you go down, which is where the challenge really happens. And there's some like different symbols and little options that you'll see attached to each to kind of like increase, um, to kind of in increase the difficulty level. And it's, you know, it's just good pointy fun. It's just good pointy fun because you, you just point stuff in here, right? It's just a good, really satisfying sound effect. It I is have to really say. satisfying. <laughs> They're very pl ploopy and ploppy. They are, which I, I appreciate. I do like a lot of plooping and ploppings. <laughs> oh. I didn't even think about it when I was saying it. It's okay. But just Ron just had to react. So, walk, walked right into it. <laughs> let's let's watch me not get this nine block over here. Oh, how on earth would you even get a nine? I, I mean... Not look like look what happens. See, oh gosh, I'm such a terrible player. See, I'm coming down here. I mean, the real strategy of this game is to try and hit these ones below so that they come back up so that you can get them all. And if you clear the ones at the very bottom, do the top ones fall down or no? no? Not always. It depends on the shelf. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I want to show you what happens when I don't get it. So I'm purposefully trying to. Oh, oh so you hear? I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a little like this. This beam at the top that's telling me, oh no, we're about to run out of time. It's about to hit. Uh, 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 oh, you, you might still make it. Nope. Even though that, no. Nope. Oh, okay, no. I'm going to purposefully. <laughs> I think, I oh, think you've. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. I love a game where you can't even. I don't. I don't know how to show this to you guys because it's. A I want to show you anyway. It no ends. Close. It ends when you hit all the way to the top. It ends. Flow is suddenly can. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you need to try to lose every time you play. Oh look, this is this one's thirty one. This is definitely gonna. Yeah. This is definitely gonna. Oh yeah. oh yeah, you got this. Come on. Uh, there we go. You oh, ran, out of, ran shots. out of shots. That looks fun. And look like a uh, new upgrades. Sound, the sound effects are very satisfying. It's very satisfying. Very cute little game. I love to support game devs uh, in the Play Store. There's so much, there's so many little gems, creative gems out there. And, you know, just because you don't know the characters doesn't mean it's not worth a download and a little bit of fun. Yeah. It's called Hold Down, H O L E D O. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's the strategy. That's what you need to that's do. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Is that what it's like when somebody's good at the game? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Only the developer is that good at the game. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Noodle Cake is the developer. All right. Hold down. Three ninety nine. Good. Cakes. Good pick. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark, for pointing it out to me. Yeah, he's feeding you winning games. You know. I don't know how I feel about that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do. It's totally, it's totally legit. All right, Joshua, it's your turn. I have it installed, right. and I've already wasted an hour of my life playing it. 
<laughs> All right. So uh, right now, uh, it's a great this time to be an Android awesome. gamer because there's so many great titles coming out. And I've been playing a bunch of them. There are a lot of AAA titles that of yesteryear that are being ported to Android to great effect. But when I stumbled across uh, across this game in the Play Store, its simplicity kind of got me hooked. And as, as you heard, Jason got hooked as well. It's called Type Shift. Um, now, for uh, uh, <laughs> fun fact, this is actually developed by the same studio that Flows is, uh, a Noodle Cake. Oh. And... This particular, and intentional, uh, by the way. I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> this particular game is a, is a word puzzle game. And uh, it's a little bit like a hybrid of crosswords, but also kind of like, uh, um, what are the ones, uh, like boggle in a way? Because what you get are a bunch of different lines that have, uh, you can have maybe four up to, I believe the highest that I ever got was six. Um, yeah, there you go, six different lines. And there are different letters in each one. Now, the version that uh, Jason is playing right now uh, corresponds to different clues that are beneath uh, the actual puzzle itself itself. The more classic version of the game is just going to be find words within this jumble. Now, one cool thing about it is that uh, the difficulty level is actually, um, it can be curved a little bit because you don't necessarily have to find specific words in uh, in the puzzle. You can just find any words and that will get you hopefully to the score that, that does the clear. In this case, it'll be 12 at the top right, as you can see there. It's just a really simple game and uh, it's one of those quick time wasters, uh, in Jason's case, an hour. Uh, but yeah. It's a quick time waster that actually is a good brain teaser, and it's something that I was uh, really kind of looking for, especially in the post words with friends world and whatnot. Like this is just something that is very well designed. It's very easy on the eyes, and it's also free. Uh, there are ads involved, but if you buy any of the packs of puzzles, uh, they range from uh, they they can go as low as ninety nine cents. Any purchase will remove the ads. It will add the premium features, and you get the pack that you bought, obviously. But there, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to pay anything, you don't have to. You can always just uh, get any of the free packs and they're all really good brain teasers so i uh i recommend this game mainly because it's just nice to get the brain moving a little bit and it's really awesome when you uh come across a word that you didn't quite realize was in there and then you just kind of feel that sense of accomplishment so any of you word puzzle people out there who might be into games like uh like words with friends or boggle or crossword puzzles this is a nice little hybrid of all of the above i really want to get at least one thing i haven't been able to get a single thing <laughs> Uh, uh, dealing, dealing, um, dealing. There we go. There you go. All right. And then once you do that, they, they light up and you don't have to go back to that well again. Clearly. You do, but yeah, it's cool. It's fun. It's a total time waster. Obviously, I spent an hour playing it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to just hop in real quick and take a look at these apps. And then I ended up playing this like crazy. I love word games. It's Very called for you. Type Shift. One word. They're edifying. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good pick. Um, my app. Your turn. So there is a web site called Camel, Camel, Camel. Yes. We've yeah. talked about it on Know How. Yeah, I know. You talked about it a couple of weeks ago, which is really good for tracking kind of like historical data around Amazon pricing. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, have your eye on the, the Galaxy S7 and you want to know like what is the lowest price Amazon's ever offered that, to like, or, or, you know, what I do sometimes is I'll go there and they'll, they'll have like a sale price on something. I'll go to camel, camel, camel and realize, oh, they have the sale price like every 30 days and then it goes up yeah. and then it comes back down. So I feel less of that kind of like, oh, it's only on sale right now. Like I got to think, do I really want this right now? Or sometimes you'll realize like, holy cow, it's never been this inexpensive. The problem is camel, 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 there's no app for Android, you could just save the website and visit it on, you know, on, in your web browser. Uh, but there's no app. So I did some searching and I found an app called Fluctuate. And Fluctuate is actually a universal price tracker. There's a free version or you can pay uh, $2.99 to kind of get unlocked uh, version of this. You can see earlier today, I put in the Jabra Elite 65T. I love these in-ear headphones. They're my favorites right now. Um, I put it in and when I put it in, I bull well, it looks like the price where it's tracking at Amazon right now has increased by 2% since mm. I put it in earlier. The essential phone I put in earlier today and it decreased by 33% since <sighs> I put it in there. So it's now at a, it's really it's now at $190, but it was oh, I see. It saved $190, yeah. decreased 32%. When I put it in it was 578. It's now current price 388. If I go to buy it net buy now, it'll take me through to Amazon. And you'll see 388 uh, 
84. So this is a way for you to track products. Um, you can you don't just have to track them on Amazon, but I'll show it off on Amazon. If I was to go to, let's say, the Essential Earphones HD, hopefully this works. This is a demo. And I find the share button because this is the Amazon web page that I'm on right now. So I'm not in the app. So I guess I could go up here and go share. And then when I share, I would find fluctuate, share to fluctuate. It turns on it a little bit. Hopefully it recognizes it. The first time I did this, it had a hard time, but it recognized it. So it says essential earphones, $78. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So now it has added an entry down here and it's monitoring for that. It's going to track the price over time. What I can then do is I can go up to this little bell here and I can say, if this, uh, which is normally 78, if this ever drops to $70, set the threshold, notify me. And then where it's tracking at Amazon, if that those essential earphones ever drop below $70, that's my threshold and that's my my ticket to buy, essentially. I, I see that, I go, okay, well, I'm gonna jump on this right now. If you pay the $299, you end up getting kind of this little price history and it tracks as long as you're tracking, I think. So I bet if you go down here, it'll update at some point to kind of make that adjustment. It's not right now. Um, Oh, so you can see right here. So this is the essential phone, right? Like when I put it in earlier today, it was all the way up there above 560. And now over time, uh, in the last 24 hours, it's dropped down. So you can kind of see. And if you go to Camel, 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 you'll see these. But I mean, they cover the history of the product over years on Amazon. So it's really interesting to see how Amazon plays with its pricing and why it does it at certain times. This is kind of like that. It's, it's really uh, very very close to that. And this isn't, like I said, just locked into Amazon. Uh, you could do this to track uh, flights. You could do this to track a number of different things. You just share to it, or you can copy the URL and paste it in, and it will kind of churn on that and then say, hey, is this is this the product that you want to track? And uh, you can say yes and put in your little, your price point, or just have it in there and casually track it over time. And when it crosses that threshold, you buy it. You buy the thing and hopefully you saved some money in the process. So it's called Fluctuate Universal Price Tracker. It's free. Uh, you can kind of open up the kind of price history uh, information down there for $2.99. I think there's some other uh, added features in there as well. But uh, that's it. Fluctuate. All right. So, Kudos on the Jabras, by the way. Like you and I are on the same page with those truly they, wireless earbuds. They're great. Like they're they're yeah. absolutely my pre preference. They fit my ears perfectly. They don't drop out. Um, they last forever. Yeah, I've, I've totally come around on the Bluetooth headphone thing. Like I, I was very resistant, well, and th those welcome those welcome. have those have uh, been part of what <laughs> has convinced me. I still like to have the headphone jack yeah. port. Though I hate having to use a dongle when I when I want to nice switch over. Nice thing is you have choice. I suppose so. You have lots of choices. But it's just so lame when you when you're just in the wrong situation and all you need is that port. And any other time you would have had that port, but now you don't because they I got rid of it. Five adapters. Yeah, and you just put them in the car, com. put them in your backpack, but everything, in every purse, just everything. Yeah, that's kind of what you need to do. And they're not that expensive. They're so. not ten bucks. Twit.to slash AAA poll 383 is where you go to place your vote. Twit.to slash AAA poll 383. Place your vote for your favorite app. Is it shorty? Is it hold down? Type shift or fluctuate? This is a great arena this week, I have to say. Uh, Twit.to slash AAA poll 383. Oh, yeah. Oh, Victor likes shortcuts. <laughs> Victor knows Victor where likes it's taking at. shortcuts. <laughs> I too like that uh, icon. <laughs> <laughs> icon man, the icon is, is pretty great. That's, uh, yep. No, but it actually looks useful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we will uh, check in on that next week and see where the standings shift. Uh, man, this is just the year of the guest. Uh, and speaking of the guest, Joshua Vergara, thank you so much for hopping on tonight. We really appreciate you joining us again. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, again, it's the first time I've done it remotely. And this was this was really awesome. This is really cool. Yeah, um, you, it was you, great to watch the show while being on it at the exact same time again. <laughs> yeah. 383 episodes, most of them with Skype guests. So we've got the, we've got it down on our end. We'll just pass the feed along to you and make it easy for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, so YouTube.com slash Joshua Vergara. Where do you like what do you want to leave people with? What should people be looking for? 
Uh, well, that would be the main place. But if you want to find out what I'm up to, even outside of my own YouTube channel, you can always find me on any social network with the handle at JVTechT. I'll make it easy for you. JV loves tech and he loves to drink tea. So JVTechT. Uh, so really easy to find me on there. I'm pretty much trying to do as many po as many things as I possibly can all at once, uh, which is not really it, – it's, 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 it's a little bit tougher. You know, I'm, I'm a solo creator now, so I get overwhelmed pretty, pretty easily, especially with like the four phones I have yet to uh, – <laughs> <laughs> to review coming up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram as well. Uh, I'm active mostly on those two networks. Facebook, you can find me as well. But if I don't know you, I'm probably not going to friend you. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that would be uh, the main way to keep up with what I'm doing, uh, especially in this uh, uh, solo creator new world that I'm in now. And thank you again for having me as uh, as JV. Uh, I know that everything is so different in my life now. <laughs> <laughs> so different. It's like you're not using Android phones anymore or you know. <laughs> yeah, your Windows phone now, yeah, right? Yeah, you, you just ditch <laughs> smartphones now. I mean, I saw you go back to a tin can. <laughs> Speaking of tin cans, yeah. Uh, thanks again, man. We'll have you back soon. And yeah, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Uh, Ron, what is new with you, sir? I, I, I got to work on my catchphrases after hearing Joshua with his uh, ways to remember and everything. I oh, he's got catchphrases. He's got like... Yeah. Like hand, so I, hand signs. I gotta work on that branding to try to yeah. get everyone to remember to follow <laughs> me at RonXO on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, but beyond that, uh, just uh, keep plugging along, keep working. Not much to plug. Just in, trying to enjoy the last grasps of summer. Yeah. Um, the heat and humidity is broken here in New York, and so like I'm trying to, you know, ignore all the back to school stuff and just you know hold on to the memories. Yes, hold so, on to it. On. 2018 summer will go down in the books. Is the best yep. summer Ron ever had in New York. <laughs> uh, Flo, 2018, best summer you ever had? And um, I had a pretty good summer. <laughs> I had a pretty good summer. In fact, uh, I have an article up at Lifehacker if you would like some advice on Android Pie. Oh, so some of the best tips nice. over at Lifehacker right now. And if you just want to know like where I write and what I do on a daily basis, that's at florencelion.com, though I haven't actually updated my website in a while because... <laughs> Again, I've been very busy. You got a lot of. Uh, you yeah. can also follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at Oh That Flow and on Twitter at Oh That Flow. Yes, I am still on Snapchat um, because I am home alone all day, so I got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, keeps me busy. Uh, so, yeah, follow me on the internet. Right on. I am there. Thank you, Flo. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's good and to be back. thank you, Victor. It's good to have you back as well because you were out Welcome last back, week. Welcome back, Victor. Thanks. Good Welcome to be back. Welcome back. Really appreciate all the work that you do, and thank you, sir. No problem. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, let's see here, yellowgoldmusic.com if you want to find some music that I've made. Uh, Twit.tv, which is this you know little tech network that I work at that you're watching this on probably. Uh, lots of shows. In fact, Leo and gang are leaving next week for a few weeks. So I'm going to be filling in on a lot of shows. I'm going to be doing security oh, now. Boy. This week in Google for probably like three weeks. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more of a lot more of my face and then screensavers as well. Uh, so you're going to see a lot more of me on the network over the next couple of weeks. So I guess stay tuned for that. Uh, but that is it for this week. Best ofs. If you want to submit moments for best of, we would really appreciate it. If you is start it already first. that time of year? Oh, yes, it is. It, it is, is because if we start now, yes, literally, this is the point of the year where you're like, I can't believe it's almost the end. And then we're going to blink and it's going to be Christmas time. And we're going to be doing like our holiday, like best devices of the year thing. And yeah, oh man, it's, it's like right around the corner. So submit your uh, favorite moments. I'm not going to do a blowout best of like I did last year. I'm going to save Victor the agony of editing it together. I feel so bad that, that I did that to you, Victor, still. Um, so we're going to simplify it a little bit, but anyways, I need your moments that you submit and I need your help and I would really appreciate that. Also, um, just a huge thanks to, we have some folks here yes. who are in studio watching live with us. And we're always excited to have audience members. Absolutely. Nobody stays this late. I know. You we're, should. We're, we're, we're late night show. Yeah, you know? we're the, we're the Seven adults. Seven o'clock. We're the adult evening content, you know? <laughs> so it's awesome to have you all here. Thank you so much for joining us. Anyone can join us in the studio. If you email tickets at twit.tv, 
uh, you can join us live in the studio and watch the show as it records and make us feel just a little special. Yes. Uh, leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails, AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. You can find our Arena apps list at twit.to slash Android apps. All the apps that we've shown on the Arena are there. Show notes and past episodes can be found at the one place on the web where you find all this information, twit.tv slash Android. A A A, and if you go there, you can subscribe to the show. Uh, really, you can subscribe to all of our shows if you go to twit.tv, find the show page, and we make it very easy for you. And we do record live every Tuesday, five uh, five p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. So uh, you know you can check it out while it's being recorded. That is it for this week. We'll see y'all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. See you later. Uh, bye. All right, so we're going to taste really not, quick. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't able to get any Oreos. I decided to err on the side of caution in terms of health today. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Because what, once you pop, you can't stop, or that's something else. Exactly. It's not Oreos. But anyways. Bold shape. This is the final, the 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 final uh, Oreo tasting, I think. Now we know yeah. that the next, the next wave is pie. Now officially, the, are we all on pie right now, by the way? I'm running pie on Ron? my Pixel, yes. Not, not, not on oxygen. I'm on the one plus six. Oh yes, that's right. Has okay. not been pied right. yet. He's, he's no pie another, in Ron's he's face. He's on another planet. You know, different benefits, but it's working. <laughs> so yeah. what happens? It's okay. It's okay. Um, still, if we eat pie, even if you're not on pie, I think the rules are you can still eat pie. So yeah. there's that. Um, but so this is the last Oreo tasting. Let's do it. And We've eaten a lot of Oreos, and this <laughs> so time we saved. Out, we're- we're going out with a with a golden anniversary with golden Oreos. <laughs> yeah, maybe one of the more boring flavors uh, that there is. Well, but hey, gold- if you're not, if you're not like, uh, one of my friends at work isn't a big chocolate guy. Yeah, this there's a lot of people who don't friends. like chocolate. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that's true. Um, I, I, these are, my heart's already like, hurting looking at that. Here, would you, <laughs> so these are like would you like it, Joshua? Here, have it. I wish. Have it. Ah. I'm going to the <laughs> camera. It's really hard because it's above me. Have it. This is what... This is what happens when I can't make it into the studio for once. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You'd be eating if you were here. All right, golden Oreos around the horn. Uh, Final Oreo tasting. Around the horn. Uh, Oh, and this is it. Sorry, I I normally do this to show you what's inside. If you like graham crackers, this could be the flavor for you. Is this graham? Is it a graham cracker cookie? Is that what it is? I feel like it, or it's a it's a vanilla cookie kind of. The filling is spilling out. The filling is spilling. Hmm. Is it that hot in San Francisco right now? <laughs> no, it's not actually. Yeah, it's actually I don't think it's a graham cracker, but it's like a, it's a vanilla cookie. Yeah, vanilla mm-hmm. cookie. Yep. Ah, uh, I mean, that's not well. That's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the 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 next it's classic flavor. It's delicious. You know, behind the original, it's the secondary classic flavor. Someone get me a cup of hot cocoa. I want like yeah. the crumbs of this at the bottom. Yeah, I was about to say, jokes on you guys because I'm the one with the hot liquid over here. It's been real, little hand. We've ha- we've had a lot of fun. You taking these what Oreo cookies hey, look, away from me. Covering. <laughs> you, <laughs> you really, you know what's up, little hand. You take these cookies and you eat the whole package. All right, all right. You enjoy yourself there. What um, has happened to this show? <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. We've changed a lot since the last time you were on, Joshua. It's been um, a while. Yeah, would be good with a nice cup of coffee. It would. Yeah. A mochaccino. Oh, mochaccino. I enjoyed it. Mochaccino. Yeah. I like, I, 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 as I'm getting older, I'm embracing vanilla as a mm-hmm. flavor. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a more refined, as a kid, it's easy to go for chocolate because it's sweet and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, this is, this is quite good. Yeah. I will always be team chocolate. I mean, I've been standing for chocolate since the day I came out of the womb. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but you're still, you're still young. So when you get, when you get more, I appreciate wise, that. Thank you, Ron. We'll, we'll, yeah. Thank you. Become more refined. I refuse to give this a point score because this is the last one. I'm going to give it a thumb a thumb ring up. Oh, I'm also going to give it a thumb ring up. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm going to join you with a, with a thumb ring up. I don't have a ring, but I, I have a ring in my heart. All right. so. <laughs> Good enough. Three thumb rings up. And that, is, I don't know if I've ever eaten as many Oreos as I have this past year. I can't year. believe we did this. Yeah. And you know what? You know What? 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 I don't know what. You know what? Oreo still hasn't reached out to us. Yeah, it's true. It's been. I know. Has it gotten 50 to them? Fifty plus showings or whatever. I don't know if it got around to them. I don't know if we have that. I don't think we have Nabisco poll. 
We've got we're we're doing okay in the smartphone world, but when it comes to snacks and stuff, I think that's just we're not on their radar. We gotta have one of these, you know, companies just show up for us. <laughs> we need Petaluma Pie Company to sponsor this this episode or this that show for the next idea. year. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can eat a year's worth of pie. I don't know. I love I think pie. That don't would get actually, me wrong. I think that would actually. I mean, I don't know. We could do savory pies and sweet pies. True. 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 You know. We could do, uh, I don't want to do pizza pies because I feel like pizza pies are. However, here's the wrinkle. Oh boy. Here's the wrinkle. With Oreos, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Like yeah. it's a crispy cookie. You, you go off mic, eat the cookie. It's pretty easy to shield people from having to hear that lip smacking stuff. When you're talking about pies, it's kind of slurpy. Yeah. It's kind of sloppy, <laughs> especially if you get away from the dessert and you go towards things like pizza. Like Wouldn't it's going to get gross really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, right. just, it's like crystallized water, apple, like apple mm. juice at the bottom. Like you almost need a straw. Good, yeah. But it's. The show's going to become some weird ASMR. Yes, thing. exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anything for the hits, right? It's going to be on Reddit top posts. Like, I found a new source of ASMR, and it's all about Android when they taste it. It's all about uh, ASMR, pie. baby. <laughs> so maybe it's not a good idea. We'll, we'll toy around with well, it, though. Yeah. Maybe we'll eat some pie here and there, but yeah, I don't think we're doing it. Here and there, but we year. can't. I, I can't mean, do a full year. I just can't do it. We can't. <sighs> I, I was up for the challenge. I know, but, but you're you know, over there. Fine. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Leo is right. even up for the challenge. He was like, make it happen, do it. I'm like, I just I just don't know if I can. Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Uh Pie of the Month Club. So there is oh. a pie of the month club. Oh. Oh goodness. So at so, once a month, now that is it I can probably calendars. Do. Right. For forty dollars a month, you can get a pie sent to you. Forty dollars? So, so 80? 80? yeah. Okay, when you're talking cost, is a lot I mean, of money. Uh, forty dollars is a lot of money. That's, I mean, that's yeah. relatively comparable to a lot of the Oreo cookies that I had to buy $10 per week. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you bought... Because I had to buy, yeah, the kind of flavors that were expired. Special. So, special order. What is this month's pie, though? It doesn't say what this month's pie is. So, so it's always a surprise, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Sur but you surprise. Do the, you, do, you do get the Pie Lover's Newsletter, <laughs> which is titled A Slice of Heaven. Ah, that's good. Slice of heaven. They should really work surprise into their their copy. Surprise. Okay. <laughs> I would also like to note that my wife just texted me. Uh, let's please not join the Pie of the Month Club. <laughs> <laughs>